Hi everyone, so I'm going to continue uh, with this description of the Bohr model and how you can use it to calculate the emission lines on, a, on an emission spectrum of, of a gas, of an elemental gas, okay? So we kind of closed off here in the previous video, we are talking about how the Bohr uh, equation to calculate the energy um, that's either released or absorbed by an electron, which is this part of the equation, can be related to the energy of a photon that, again, is either absorbed or released as a, fun uh, as a result of this uh, uh, transition of the electron from a lower to a higher energy level or from a higher to a lower energy level, okay? Um, there's just a couple of kind of additional points I want to make here, and then we're going to go through a couple of examples. That should be the end of this topic. So again, the review here, the idea here is that when you see a line in the hydrogen spectrum, right, the line spectrum here, you see the different colors, that really corresponds to a particular transition. Okay, so for example, when um, you see a line going from uh, this energy level to this energy level right here, you're going to see a particular color, and that color corresponds to a transition, again, from specific energy level. When you see this transition, you're going to see a different color, and that corresponds to a specific energy level. Uh, I just want to point out here that the drawing here is a little misleading because when, you, when we look at these colors, these are all visible colors. And remember that visible colors, that means that it's a Balmer series. And if it's Balmer series, that means that the, uh, the N level should be N equals 2. And I think it might be a little hard here. You might think that this one is a little, it's the nucleus, but this is actually, they, they drew here that this is the N equals 1. And the the circle right here is n equals two. So this is actually the second orbit. Okay, the first orbit is very very close right here to the nucleus. Okay, so if you have transitions going to the first orbit, then that's called the Lyman series, if you remember. And then the transition that goes to the second orbit is called the Balmer series, and that's what results in the visible uh, lines that we see with our naked eyes. Right, ultraviolet you can't see because it's our eyes are not evolved to uh, look at. Um, ultraviolet um, radiation and similarly if you go to n equals 3 which is to this energy level here the n end point then you get something called a passion series which is the infrared radiation okay so that you know one way to represent the uh, uh, em the emission lines is by drawing this type of uh, transition from a higher to n equals 2 for example or from higher orbit to n equals 1 but more often you'll see that people draw it this way as a basically a, a, um, a one-dimensional energy diagram where energy is the y-axis in this case a, is the vertical axis and basically you draw the energy level from lowest which is ground state so here's the ground state energy level is this line right here and then you have the n equals 2 uh, energy level which is this line and then you notice that they progressively gets closer and closer together n equals 3 n equals 4 5 6 and so on point that out here as well that as you move further away from the nucleus the energy levels get closer and closer together that's something you can calculate using Bohr's equation as well uh, but that's an important idea okay uh, so I want to uh, point that out to you again after I, um, uh, you know, af after I do a, an example and then show you some calculations associated with this, okay? But at, between the ground state and the first excited state, there's a huge energy barrier to jump from here to here. And then from the second to, you know, from the, the first excited to second excited, you get a smaller energy barrier. And then as you go to the next one, it gets closer and closer. This has to do later on with um, this you can use this to explain why certain um, metals tend to form, you know, multi-charge uh, uh, species, you know, ions with multiple charges versus some metals that can only one can only form uh, ions with one charge. Okay, so before we go to the example, I want to again remind you that there are two units of a RH that you can use, right? Uh, Rydberg constant. Uh, one unit is this 109737. Remember that there's zero zero. I, uh, there's a typo there. It should be 109737000 um, per meter. This is the original Rydberg equation. It's just one over lambda equals the Rydberg constant times this uh, difference between the two uh, n values, one over n squared for each one of them. 
But remember that this was what Rydberg found, but he couldn't explain the meaning of these numbers. And then Bohr, of course, came up with this model, which actually gave meaning to the value of RH, N1, and N2. Uh, and you can convert the RH value from wavelength to energy if you just remember that this is 1 over wavelength. And if you remember that to convert 1 over wavelength to energy, if you remember that energy is HC over lambda, right? HC over lambda is equal to the energy of a photon. So if I were to take this number and multiply it by HC, Planck's constant times the speed of light, what I get is another number, which is this, 2.178, or sometimes written as just 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18. And the unit there will then be joules, because now you've uh, multiplied by Planck's constant times the speed of light, and that converts the unit to joule, okay? So that's, again, I want to uh, emphasize that you use this value when you have the energy form of the equation, of the of this equation. So if the left side is energy, then you want to use this as your constant. If the left side is 1 over lambda, then you're going to use this number as your equation. All right, let's now do a couple of uh, examples to illustrate how to apply Bohr's equation uh, in the context of uh, a calculation. So in this case, it says, according to Bohr's theory, what's the energy of an electron in the n equals 4 orbit of a hydrogen atom? Okay, so the question is n equals 4, and what you have to remember is Bohr, of course, gave this equation to help you calculate the energy of an electron for every energy level of every orbit you're, con uh, you're concerned about. So in this case, it's really just a matter of plugging it into this equation. So E of, of 4 would be equal to negative RH. Because we're talking about energy, the value of RH we want to use is 2.18 or 2.178, depending on how many sig figs you want here. So uh, joules is the river constant. And then 1 over N, N in this case is 4, so 1 over 4 squared. So then the value you're going to get out of this is 1.36, oops, 1.36 times uh, 10 to the minus 19 uh, joules, okay? So E equals 4 is at this level. Now, um, I want to point out that, so that's the answer to the question. Now, I want to point out that uh, there was something earlier I mentioned about the fact that as you go higher and higher in the energy, you tend to get a, a closer and closer energy level, okay? so. If you imagine the, um, this is your energy, right? Uh, remember that the equation, the equation of the energy level is always E is equal to, En is equal to negative Rh, uh, 1 over N squared, okay? So if you're at N equals 1, which is the lowest energy possible, then your value of the energy would just be uh, negative Rh, right? That's the lowest you can get. And then if you go to the next energy level, which is n equals 2, okay? This is n equals 1, right? This is at n equals 1, n equals 1. At n equals 2, then the value will be 1 over 4 times negative Rh. So it will be basically you're going to move, this is negative Rh, you're going to move all the way here to negative um, Rh over 4, okay? That's that's if you have uh, n is equal to 2. Now, you can keep going, but let's think about the extreme case here. What would be the largest value of n you can have? Well, you can have infinity. There will be a really large value of n. If n is equal to infinity, then this value here would approach 0, right? In other words, e of n, e of infinity, would be equal to 0. If it's 0, that means that that's maxed out. That means this is where... Uh, uh, this value here is zero if n is equal to infinity. And remember what I mean by that is that at that point, if n is infinity distance away from the nucleus, that means that the electron has been pulled away from the atom. Okay, so the atom no longer exists. At that point, you have an ion instead. Okay, now you notice that from going from level one to level two, you get a big jump. If you go to level three, now this becomes negative Rh over 3 squared, which is just negative Rh over 9. That difference is closer now. So you get probably right here is what uh, negative Rh over 9 is, okay? Negative Rh over 9. So that's for n equals 3, okay? And as you go higher, and then you get negative Rh over 16, which is 4 squared. That's even closer. And then you go negative Rh over 25, 
which is closer yet okay so you can see that as you go higher and higher in energy level the actual values of the energy uh, from one level to the next gets closer and closer which means that a lot of times it gets easier to jump from one to the other level because they're so close together between one and two there's a huge distance here in terms of energy but between four and five there's a much closer distance this again has importance uh, when we talk about uh, transition metals later on when we say that you know uh, you can sometimes get a, a certain you know orbital being uh, flipped from one to the other depending on whether we have an ion or or a uh, an atom and that's because at higher energy level they just get really really close together so it's really easy for the electron to jump from one level to another